Here are some of them you sent into our eyewitness portal today. We begin with this one, a picture of Kunzum Bridge, which links UBA, Michika, and Madagali local government areas in Adamawa State. According to our eyewitness reporter, the bridge was blown up by Boko Haram insurgents in 2014, and government claims the contract to rebuild it has been awarded, but nothing has been done since then and is calling on the government to do something as soon as possible as commuters find it difficult to cross the bridge, especially during the rainy season. Next is this image from Government College, Keto Ekpe in Lagos State, showing its assembly hall in a state of disrepair, the roof blown off. That's just a few of the facilities that have been spoiled in that school. And our Arabic reporter is calling on the state government to come and fix it. Still in Lagos State, we have this picture of a flooded area in Isolo after a heavy downpour. According to our eyewitness reporter, it's a result of blocked canals in the area, and he laments the effect of the situation on business activities, also calling on the Lagos State government to come to their aid. Many thanks for sending in those images, and we do encourage you to keep them coming. To education now, again the reconciliation meeting between the federal government and the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has been adjourned to Thursday, February the 7th, for further deliberation. An emergency meeting to resolve the lingering industrial action that is already entering its third month, held behind closed doors at the Ministry of Labor and Employment in the nation's capital, Abuja. At the end of the meeting, which is the ninth in the series, the president of ASU declined to comment on their deliberations with the minister, even as he agrees that they are making progress. We have information for our members. Until we give them, we cannot, we cannot right, see. Right, sir, you know the student out there to want to hear something. Yes, yes that, is, that is why we are telling you that we are making progress. Ah. The progress we are making is in everybody's interest. All stakeholders will benefit at the end of the day. Well, How long will this be, sir? We are meeting on Thursday. So when we come back on Thursday, we will address you. Do you, sure do you feel this industrial action will be over before the election? I cannot tell you that until I get back to my members. Even though he cannot tell about that situation, the Minister of Labor and Productivity, Dr. Chris Ngige, on the other hand, is hopeful that the next adjourned date for the meeting will seal a deal that will lead to the suspension of the industrial action. He maintains that the federal government has no 50 billion naira to revive the university education as demanded by the striking lecturers. The meeting has been protracted, but the good news is that we are getting, getting to the end of the tunnel. That's what I see. 100 minutes and we can see the light when you say you are getting to the end of the tunnel. We have gotten, we have gotten, we have gotten to the end of the tunnel. Okay. All oh. five have been made. What about the remaining two? Have you made those areas? We have, we have. And what are the areas there? You, you mentioned them before. You didn't <laughs> mention them to us. We don't know who no, no, they no, are. No, no, no. You were the one asking me that. They, I mean, the issue of the investing the vital, yeah, vitalization uh, of investment. What we have? What was we it? Don't, we don't have 50 billion. So what's the government offering? It's an aspect that you said it to you that we can do 50 billion. Let's cross over to Abuja Studios where Linda is standing by with more stories. Great to see you. Great to see you too, Melinda, and welcome to Abuja. Those are members of some civil society organizations in Kaduna State who hit the streets of Kaduna metropolis earlier today to demand the sack of the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onohe. The group, including women and youths, marched through major roads chanting Onohe must go. They commended President Muhammadu Buhari for taking the bold step to sanitize the judiciary. According to the protesters, Justice Onohe should have resigned from office and saved himself and the judiciary further embarrassment. 
The people you are seeing here in their contingent are supporting Mr. President for suspending the former Chief Justice of Nigeria. That was an action we felt it is decisive, it was necessary, and that action was timely. Because if that was not done, the common man was becoming a subject of ridicule. A common man cannot get a judgment to his favor, even when he has everything to his advantage. Therefore, why we have assembled ourselves here today is to be able to tell the entire world and Nigeria that we, in Kaduna State are in support of our amiable president for taking that bold and courageous step for suspending Justice Walter Onogen from office. And we are advising and we are advising the president that after the suspension, Walter Onogen should know that by his age and exposure, he ought to have resigned from this office by himself. Addressing the protesters, Governor El Rufai says, by failing to declare his assets, the embattled CJN has proven that he cannot continue to head the nation's judiciary. In Kaduna, we do not support corruption. In Kaduna State, we do not support injustice. In Kaduna State, we are 100% behind the integrity of our president. And I assure you that the message that you've given to me will be delivered to Mr. President. The case of Justice Onogen is a very sad one. Because Sheikh Usman Danfodio, who is the founder of the Sokoto Caliphate, wrote that the worst kind of corruption you can find in any public servant is judicial corruption. Because when a president is corrupt or a governor is corrupt, it is to the judge that ordinary people can take their case for the judge to remove him from office. When the judge himself is corrupt, it is the highest form of corruption and must never be condoned. The president did not remove Onogen from office. He said in, in the honor of the judiciary, step aside so that the charges against you can be investigated and prosecuted. To legal matters. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has failed to arraign the former Director General of a National Intelligence Agency, Mr. Ayoduluki, and his wife, Folashade, before the Federal High Court in Lagos today. According to the counsel to the EFCC, Rotimi Oyedipo, the case was not listed in the case list for the day. He added that the case would likely come up on Wednesday, February the 6th. The EFCC had on Wednesday slammed a four-count charge bordering on alleged $205.9 million fraud on the former NIA boss, his wife and others. The charge comes more than one year after he was suspended by the president, shortly after his agency laid claim to the cash haul recovered by the EFCC from an apartment in Ikoyi area of Lagos said to belong to his wife. Over $43 million and £27,000 cash were found stashed in the apartment located at Osborne Road in Ikoyi, Lagos. Meanwhile, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has secured an interim forfeiture of the sum of 1,494,000 naira found hidden away in the bank account allegedly linked to the former First Lady of Nigeria, Mrs. Patience Jonathan. The order, which was granted by Justice Louis Alagua of the Federal High Court, sitting in Kano, was as a result of an ex parte motion filed by the Commission. The FCC says upon receipt of the intelligence, the Commission swung into action by conducting preliminary investigation, which allegedly revealed that the former First Lady and some relatives of the former President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan are directors of the company. The court further ordered that the forfeited sum be deposited in the Treasury's single account of the federal government. Justice Hakim Oshodi of an Ikeja High Court has told alleged kidnap kingpin Chukudume Me Onwama DK, aka Evans, there was no proof that he was tortured by the police. Given the ruling admitting Evans' June 11, 2017 confessional statement into evidence, Justice Oshodi noted that the 1999 Constitution does not require that statements to the police must be in a specific form. He also said that based on Evans' videotaped confession played in, on, in the court on October, 20, on October 26, 2018, there was no proof that Evans was tortured to provide details of his alleged misdeeds. Justice Oshodi said the alleged kidnapped kingpin 
did not provide any evidence to court to back the allegations of extrajudicial killings he made against the police. Away from the judiciary, President Muhammad Buhari has given the leadership of the Independent Marketers Association of Nigeria, Ipman, the assurance that his administration will support the body in its quest to float refineries. President Buhari is also seeking the collaboration of the National Executive of Ipman to expose oil marketers who export the country's petroleum products illegally, saying smuggling is a threat to the nation's economy and security. The president spoke when he received the national executives of the body who paid him a courtesy visit at the presidential villa Abuja. He thanked the visitors for ensuring adequate supply of petroleum products throughout the year and for endorsing him in his bid for re-election in the forthcoming presidential election. I am also very pleased to hear that your members are planning to invest in refinery and petrochemical facilities. This clearly shows that Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, like the APC, also has plans to move to the next level. I want to assure you that this administration we fully support this investment, which aligns with Nigeria's energy security agenda. As I commend you on the successes you have recorded so far, I also want to ask you that you continue to support the government in ensuring petroleum products meant for Nigeria are not illegally taken out of the country. We all know this illegal smuggling of products out of Nigeria is a threat to our national economy and security. To the Independent Petroleum Markets Association of Nigeria leadership, I want to ask you to fully collaborate with government by exposing those members who participate in these illegal activities.